In this video, you will learn seven simple Audacity tips that will help your voice sound much better after editing in Audacity. Tip 1. Record in mono. If you're recording your voice in Audacity, so you're not using a different software to record your voice, then I always recommend recording in mono first. Then once you have cleaned up your audio track, you can then make that a stereo track afterwards. And that will ensure that your audio is playing from both sides, left and right, rather than coming out of one speaker or one side of the car, which you really don't want. So let me show you how you can edit your audio track first, and then I will show you how to make your mono track into a stereo track and export it that way. Tip number two, noise reduction. So let's play that back quickly. Paul had a purpose, and that is to plan and get ready for what is to come in the future. The first thing I want to do is to remove background noise from my audio. So background noise is really any sound other than the sound that you want to hear. For example, that static white noise that accompanies a lot of recordings. So first, I'm going to keep clicking on the zoom in tool until I am zoomed in enough to select a few seconds of just white noise so that Audacity knows what to filter out. So I'm going to hold down the left part of my mouse and drag it towards the right to select at least one second of just white noise on my audio track. A quick recommendation is to leave about a half second prior to the audio starting to capture background noise. As you can see, I've done here. So once you have done your selection, click on effect, noise reduction, and then get noise profile. Next, double click on your audio track to select all of the audio track you want filtered. Then click on effect again, noise reduction, and choose how much noise you want filtered out. I like to keep these settings as they are. However, if you move the cursor or the slider towards the left, you're reducing how much noise gets filtered out. And if you slide the cursor to the right, you're increasing the amount of noise that gets filtered out. So I'm going to leave the settings on default and click OK. Now let's play that back. All right, no more background noise. Yay! Tip number three is to silence any lip smacks on your audio. A lip smack sounds like this. You know when you smack your lips together while talking, which can't be helped sometimes. To remove lip smacks, select the lip smack, so just that area. And this usually looks like a line on the silent part of your audio. You can also select a bit of noise that comes afterwards with the lip smack if you have it there. Also, what I recommend is to always play back your lip smack so that you don't remove any real audio as well with that. And then click on the Silence Audio Selection tool to remove. Tip number four, remove any plosives. A plosive is that explosion of air that comes out of your mouth when you say p, pop. Port. Purpose. <laughs> now when I zoom in on this, you'll find that plosives often look very, very similar to another. That is a plosive, for example. That is a plosive. And that is a plosive. <laughs> so I find the best way to tackle plosives, unless you are doing a very long recording, is to eliminate them individually. So I'm going to select the plosive and only the plosive. Now that that is highlighted, click on effect and fade in. So you see that that has now brought it down already. 
but it is still there and I want to bring it down even more. So I'm going to hit Control R on my keyboard to repeat that. And I'm going to do that again, Control R, until it is much smoother. Paul had a purpose, and that is to plan and get ready for what is to come in the future. Okay, so you can see that sounds a lot better. So this is how you can remove a plosive. Tip number five, equalize your voice. Equalizing your voice means that you're really increasing the volume of some frequencies while reducing others. Now this can be a very effective way to improve your voice in audacity. And many people would suggest that you do a bass boost at 9 decibels and a treble boost at 9 decibels. However, the problem in that is audio might not sound clear and natural after this effect. So the bass boost can really muffle our audio and bringing up trebles just accentuates some of the syllabums, which makes our voice sound very unnatural. So what I recommend is to bring down the decibel level to 3 decibels for the bass boost and treble boost and then work your way up to see what really fits your voice. Now if you're using the new version of Audacity, then equalization is now called filter curve. So once you click on effects, look for filter curve, then click on manage and factory presets. Select Bass Boost and then drag it down to 3 decibels. And finally, roll off or create a curve at around 65 Hz, which makes the audio sound a lot more pleasing to the ear. And if you're a female, you can start out roll off even sooner at around 140 or 130 hertz, depending on your voice. Now we can do something very similar to the treble boost. Again, click on effects and filter curve, then select treble boost. So if you're looking for something quick, just bring it down to three decibels so that it doesn't produce that piercing sound, which is quite unpleasing to the ears. All right. So this is really a very quick and easy way to equalize your voice. Tip number six is to compress your audio. So I've left one plosive on my wave track or audio track just to show you what a compressor can do. The compressor effect basically reduces the height or the loudness of these spikes without touching the softer parts, which are down here. When we go to Effect and Compressor, the threshold is the volume level at which the compression starts to be applied. It ignores sound below this threshold. For example, this is negative 10. Anything below this would simply be ignored. But if it passes above that, it will start reducing it. Ratio is important, so you decide how much the high parts will be reduced. I use 2 to 1 ratio, meaning that it would reduce the part of the spike that are louder than negative 40 decibels by half of what it was before. So right about here. The attack time all the way down and the release time all the way down. Let's see the before and this is the after. Before and after. So you can see that the spike has now been reduced, so much better. Tip number seven is to normalize our audio. So right here I can tell just by looking at my waveform or audio track that this is going to be set at too low of a volume. So we're going to want to boost that up. So what I need to do is to select my audio track by double clicking on it. Then I'm going to go to Effect and choose Normalize. So we want to set it to negative one decibels. And we're really aiming for an amplitude that is really consistent at about 0.5 
throughout our audio track. So you can see point 0.5 is right here. So we want our waveform or audio track to be around this range. You can also set that to negative 2 decibels or negative 3 decibels, which doesn't increase the volume as high as negative 1 decibels. So I'm going to leave it at negative 1 decibels because I want the amplitude raised quite a bit. So you can see that our high peaks now go up to 0.5. So we have an audio file here that is a lot louder and clearer. Let's just look at the before and the after. Before and after. You can also use the limiter effect to reduce spikes on your audio track if you want. If you don't have this showing on the effects, make sure that it is enabled here where it says add remove plugins. If I scroll down, you can see that mine is enabled. And when I go to effect and select limiter, we can do a negative three decibel and that would still keep your audio track at a good volume. If you increase the dB, the audio track can become lower. So keep that in mind. So you can see now once that has been applied that the spike has been reduced even further. Now that we have finished editing our audio, let's make it into a stereo track. So control D to duplicate that track then we click on audio track at the top track and select make stereo track. And now we have audio coming from the left and the right speakers in stereo. So let's compare our edited audio with the original audio. Paul had a purpose and that is to plan and get ready for what is to come in the future. Paul had a purpose and that is to plan and get ready for what is to come in the future. So you can see that sounds a lot better up here. I hope you have found this video tutorial useful. If you want to see a step-by-step -step tutorial about how to use Audacity to improve your voice, then check out the link at the end of this video and also let me know what your favorite tip is. Take care.